Today on Mid-Missouri Art News, we visit with Scott Linsenbart of Sedalia, Missouri. Welcome to JCTV, Mid-Missouri Art News, supported worldwide now thanks to YouTube by uh, many art enthusiasts, uh, coming to you from the capital city of uh, Missouri, that's Jefferson City. I'm your host, Rick Jay, and today I ask you to join me, please, and uh, in welcoming uh, Mr. Scott Linsenbart of Sedalia, Missouri. Welcome and great to have you. I've been looking forward to it, Scott. Well, thank you. If I may thank call you by the first name. <laughs> sure thing, Rick. <laughs> okay. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, super. Well, um, if you can, we'll just start it off with, please tell us a little bit about Scott Linsenbart, if you would. People like to get to sort of know you personally so they can identify with different aspects of your life and the, the path you've traveled thus far. So take it away. Okay. Well, I was born right here in Jefferson City, 1960. Uh -huh. And uh, um, then my family moved to Sedalia shortly after that. My dad was a veterinarian for many years there. I have eight brothers and sisters, raised Catholic, um, graduated from parochial school from there. And uh, I live there now with my wife, Marcy, and I've been a construction contractor, house remodeler for about 25 years now. And art is uh, your love, I guess. Like do a lot maybe. of artwork, yeah. Yes, great, great. Um, if you want to say hi to any of the family, uh, you're welcome to do so. That's permissible. Any special greetings? Or? Oh, all my brothers and sisters, mom. Okay, yeah. super, yeah. great. Well, I want to start now and and ask you, and what has become uh, your biggest influence or inspiration to become an artist in the very beginning? Uh, well, I was a freshman in high school, and the art teacher started teaching us things about uh, the modern masters, modern oh, artwork, yes. things like that. Yes. Uh, Joan Miro, uh, uh -huh. Andy Warhol, uh, Mark Rothko. And as I looked at that, I thought, my goodness, I can do something like this. Because you look at the old masters and they're just so much precision and so much study that had gone into it. Yes. I, thought, I can't do something like that, but these modern masters, now I can do something like that. Uh, I see now that you mentioned modern masters and identified with Andy Warhol and stuff. And the, looking at the old masters, um, I still have that habit of being too tight, they say. But I do love that uh, until the point where I, I get to do clouds and that's my freedom. So I am considering uh, getting into maybe some of the contemporary abstract uh, influence recently by uh, Mr. Doug Freed, which you're familiar with. Uh, we interviewed Doug Freed at the studio uh, a couple of weeks ago, so that'll be coming up. But not yeah. to take anything away, I did meet you uh, first at the Missouri State Fair where I was um, honored to be part of the top 50, and you was trying to uh, make sure everyone uh, upstairs in the top 50 exhibit had refreshments uh, and what have you uh, too. So uh, that circle of meeting those people and you being a part of and then learning that you also uh, had art of interest uh, gave me an opportunity to then approach you on uh, being on the show and, and sharing your art world with the, um, uh, the art world actually that we're being viewed by now. Uh, so uh, do you have any uh, word on the state fair? I understand they may make a decision around the 15th of this month, have you? Uh, I personally don't know. I don't have any insight on that. Um, oh, I see. Usually the uh, Fine Arts Building has a Missouri Top 50, yes. which is a juried show. And then underneath they'll have professional and amateur shows on the first level. Um, the Missouri Wine 
get that right. The Missouri Wine Association, I believe, is the one who caters the wine on oh, the big reception night the, the day before the, uh, the State Fair actually starts on yes. Wednesday night. Huh. And that's when a lot of local artists get together and have a little food, have a little wine, see the art show that's been up. And that's the night that we met. Yes, and that was excellent wine and, and yes. snacks, shall we say. Well, yeah. thank you on that. Um, I guess we'll learn more. With this uh, pandemic, we are all um, sort of in a bind of just playing catch up now uh, with uh, JCTV and our guests. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's been an experience, I guess I should say. Well, I, get, I want to ask you what the craziest thing that you've been involved in in this, this type of arts uh, or what have you. Oh, well, probably the craziest thing I've ever done is, uh, it was probably 2007, I think. My sister, Janice Hargrave, who was an art teacher there in Sedalia, Missouri. Yes. Mm -hmm. She came up to me and said, uh, have you ever done any butter sculpting? And I said, no, can't say I have. She was approached by a woman that wants to know if we would do some butter sculpting for them. And how it works is that you take a large amount of butter and uh, put it on a, we built a steel frame and then put the butter on there and then carved, did our carving. And the first year we didn't know what we were doing, but we <laughs> knew we had to have some kind of a steel armature underneath. And yes. so we built that first and then uh -huh. put 800 pounds of butter onto that. Oh the my. first artwork was very comical, very cartoonish. We uh, called her Elsie. Elsie, so, I see. And um, you'll probably have a picture of that yes. come up here soon. We'll throw that but, on the timeline. But very comical, very unrealistic. You know, we didn't want to go too, too, uh, too much of it was uh, in detail because we knew <laughs> With so many farmers in the in the area, we were going to be called to the carpet, you know. Oh yes, those Wasting aren't hooves. That milk and butter. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. that, cow's hoofs aren't like that. But we just had a lot of fun with it. Right now, now what for, the, for the next seven years, we uh -huh. went on and kept going with that. Uh -huh. We uh, uh, as soon as we did the first year, it got a lot of good uh, input from it and everything. But Janice approached me somewhere between that year, 2007, 2008, and said, you know, there's something about the butter and something about the art that is colliding here, that is not uh -huh. meshing. I see. And uh, she said, I think we should really go a lot farther with it. Ooh. So we got the idea of going with an old master, Rodin. Yes. And oh. his, his sculpture, fam most famous sculpture called this, The Thinker. Yes. And so next year we had a cow uh, that was sitting on a stump in that thinker position. Oh, super. And that oh, was wow. our show. That was our Main project, exhibit, project yeah. for that show oh, see, for that yeah. year. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something really great about it, something about this butter that was just rural and earthy colliding with this fine art. Uh -huh. And so next year after that, we did uh, what we called Mona Lisa. It was a Mona Lisa done in butter, a butter cow, face and head and all. Yes. And uh, called it Mona Lisa. Um, after that, our next year, we did uh, uh, American Gothic by Grant Wood. Oh, and yes. we called it American Gothic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, two, two uh, sculptures of the farmer and his wife standing yes. there with the pitchfork and uh, turned out really good. We were really impressed with it and had a lot of fun with it. Did that for seven years and uh, after that we just had to let it go because we were just, every year we were thinking, are we really going to do this again? Are we really going to do this again? <laughs> and after seven years we thought, we're, we're going to let it pass, we're going to let it go. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, it I, really it, was. It does sound the, like it. And the craziest like it. thing we've ever done. So on the timeline we'll see what those look like. Yeah. So that's great. Um, well, uh, I guess we could ask you for um, your best advice. We like to influence, uh, like our next guest, uh, uh, young lady from Sedalia, uh, younger uh, or novice artists like to get the best advice. Yeah. What, uh, from your overall perspective, uh, which we'll be covering a lot more in detail of uh, his brushworks with his Butterworks and his sculpting, which, which is a great deal. We'll get into more in depth on this topic. 
but I would like Scott now to just generally uh, somehow give his, your advice to a new artist. How to get started and what would you uh, advise? Well, I think probably the best place to start is probably to have a space, to have that either an art studio or that basement corner or whatever it is. Have your art stuff out and just leave it out. Even if it's dry paint on brushes, just leave it out. Because whenever you get that urge to be creative, to be inspired, just go down there and start doing it. Even if you spend 20 minutes. But I find if I just leave it out, I can come back to it anytime, I'll pick it up anytime and come back to it, you can come back and forth. If I had to pull everything out every time I start and then put everything away, clean everything up, that's most of my ins inspiration time right there. Exactly. Well, I, I understand. I've never had that identified. And that's, I do that feeling. I have that feeling. If I have to set it up, I'm almost out of energy to paint. <laughs> but if I have this certain spot, which I have, it's basically, hey, that's my, and the one, when I have time for that, it's waiting for it. I just can't wait. It's like now, I'm so busy. I have a painting in process, but everything's laid out, and I walk by it three or four times a day. But eventually, that's great advice, Scott. Yeah, yeah. Well, we must take a break, and uh, we'll get back to more uh, detail uh, in uh, your world of art. So hang loose, if you would. Yes, um, we must take a break. So hang loose for a few seconds. Uh, when we come back, we'll, Scott will share more in detail, as I said a moment ago. So stay with us. Uh, it's, there's so much more right here on Mid-Missouri Art News. Places, everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. I think it might be one of the monitors. Are your parents home later? We can hang. L-U-V, love you. J-K. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. X-O. What do you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the I'm beach? lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Welcome back to Mid-Missouri Art News. We continue our discussion with Scott Linsenbart of Sedalia, Missouri. I'm your host, Rick Jay. Well, Mr. Linsenbart, you shared a lot uh, of information in the first segment, and I've uh, surely gained the attention now of our viewers here on Mid-Missouri Art News. So we're going to jump back in and see if we can't pull out a little bit more information. I'd like to, if you would, uh, discuss the fields of artwork that you're most interested in. Uh, a little bit of a, a, a brief uh, introduction to your fields of work. Hmm. Well, I think I began back in high school, back with acrylics, and um, did that for probably three or four years, if I remember right. And one of your earlier guests, Doug Fried, uh, inspired me to move into oils. And so oh, I started yes. moving into oils after that. Uh, since then, I've been just about, had my fingers in just about anything, uh, mm -hmm. from stained glass to uh, sculpting, uh, uh, plaster work, ceramics. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, I still have like watercolors floating around and that kind of stuff. Uh, one thing that inspired me that came, kind of came out of that influence from Doug was a red series. And uh, I took watercolors, uh, took oil colors, and thinned them down a lot. And I, I would run them over a textured canvas. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know how many of those I made, but somewhere between <laughs> 1980 and 1990, I made dozens and dozens and dozens. Who knows where they are now? I think I have three left. And we're going to share those on the timeline. There's probably a few on there. Okay, yeah. great. Are any of those your favorite? that you'd like to bring up, and maybe the reason behind that? Or was that just a fun time, and all 36 or whatever are part of that overall inspiration that hmm. you have? Well, I'd say if, uh, 
that, back then I took my art very seriously. I really worked on, hard on it and ran it and ran it and ran with it and um, really spent a lot of time and a lot of labor trying to make it all work. Uh, when I, I was out in Virginia Beach for a while and then moved back to Sedalia back about 2001. And shortly after that time, I started finding these little pieces of metal that I would start picking up and thinking, oh, uh -huh. God, my, that has a lot of personality. That's a lot of character. I'm going to keep this. Sure. So I started collecting this metal, not knowing what I was going to do with it. <laughs> Someone was teaching a class called Found Metal Art Sculpture. Wow. And I was like, oh, this is what all this metal is. Yes. And so we went out and uh, uh, actually kind of I took the classes, but I also spent a lot more time there building these sculptures and doing, and I don't know how many I made, maybe a couple dozen or so. But uh, this, it was a time that art was fun. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I just really had a lot of fun putting these things together. And you can kind of tell by the names of them, because instead of calling it something like geometric matrix, I would call it buzzy or Hal, or Ruthie, or something like that. I see. They all had fun little names that went with it. Right. And these little metal sculptures were, were characters. They were really Excellent. like little toys I made. Oh, and uh, oh. that was a real fun time. So those are going to, we have photos of those all on the timeline also. I believe Buzzy so. Buzzy. Buzzy. Oh, yeah. Okay, super. Well, Hal. Great. Good one. Uh, I, so I, some what guidance there? Uh, something drove you to pick those up again. That's that, that spiritualism that um, we talk about here on the program a lot, uh, even with the caveman. Why was one individual painting these scenes of the kills and what have you on the walls of the caves? And what was the guidance? What was the inspiration there? Although we think maybe that he, he suggested that maybe you folks can go out there and make the kill and I'll put these paintings on the wall for you to uh, enjoy if you'll give me a little bit of the meat you know, <laughs> when you get back. <laughs> so I, I don't know, it's just that. But you know, having a little fun uh, in, uh, in a project like that, and you see it often in people's artwork where a little bit of cartoonish uh, effect that goes into that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, uh, good point there. I find my strongest influence, or one of my strongest influences, is uh, other people's art. And if I want to be influenced, I can run off to a museum or go online and, or just visit somebody's studio and really get inspired. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, it's like another, we'll discuss that if you want. You're probably familiar with the artists that uh, had a residence there last year at the State Fair in the top 50 upstairs. A um, gentleman that does the bridges uh, of, um, oh, the water mills of Missouri. He was, uh, spoke uh, on the program of uh, really b considering art, but he went to a Monet and he was vis viewing this Monet uh, painting at this exhibit and he said something just came over him and <laughs> boom, he was influenced. I guess, so I guess we, we somehow, Somewhere along the line, I was drawing on the bedroom walls at uh, three or four years old, and people liked it. And, and the people who rented the home after we had it for years, uh, they kept that until I, I saw it last when I was 21 years old. And since then, the home has been torn down. So I, I don't know how these things are affected, even were affected by the cavemen, so, and their sculpture, or not sculpture so much, but the, uh, the paintings. And, well, uh, metal sculpture. So, do you have any more to add to that? Uh, uh, did you have you ever done a, a major, larger image? Uh, I have uh, one. I think uh, it's about six foot, seven foot high, and it is in the library, if I remember right, of State Fair Community College. It's called oh, Holst, okay. and it's a series of uh, Holst did a is a composer, and he did a. a a piece called Planets, and uh, Jupiter, Mars, and things like that were some of the, the compositions in there. And I got this idea that these, this moving kinetic piece with uh, all these balls on it, it kind of reminded me of the planets moving in the solar system. I see. And so it kind of inspired me to call it Holst, and it's there. There's another one um, just south of the um, 
Sedalia Commerce Building. The, uh, what, what, the, the train depot. The there, train depot there in area Sedalia. in Sedalia. Yeah, just south of that building is oh, one okay. called Check Nine. Check Nine. And it's a, it's a series of tools and a pipe that's, that's kind of pouring out of it. And uh, it really inspired me to use these old tools because someone worked very hard to design and dye and cast this tool and make it good for work. And then someone mm -hmm. used it for work many years and then it was set to the side or set or tossed away and now it's being reused the rebirth of the yeah. tools and so many times in life that we just have put things to the side that uh, somebody else finds a use for yes. even people yes <laughs> you know? exactly yeah. you, you know um, we at Sedalia Missouri uh, Warrensburg uh, Jefferson City uh, the whole state of Missouri Arkansas Kansas Oklahoma is just loaded with Art and Sedalia, for example, they uh, there's many exhibits that you can see through in Liberty Park or the, uh, different locations. So, if you really have a day, you just want to drive to different locations. The Dom Museum is there. The Liberty Park uh, uh, carving by a chainsaw artist we had on the program. There's a new artwork. Um, um, uh, on a uh, back of uh, a handball court that was recently just so you can can get a line and uh, and find these and so it, it's just great and now you can look for uh, Scott's art also. Well, do you do commission work? And if you do, give us some contact information. You most likely have a Facebook. Uh, Yes, I do have a Facebook page. It's called Artwork by Scott Linson Bart. And I think if you click on there, you can go in and see a lot of what I've done in the past. I and uh, hopefully things I'll be, be working on these days. Well, that's true. You know, we're in this pandemic. We're not really on a, a lockdown anymore. But there are people that cannot get out, the elderly, the handicapped. And they love to view these uh, uh, Facebooks and uh, different uh, websites, et cetera. So thanks for that information. And, and I invite you all to tune in. Go ahead. Oh, and if they're interested in peace, we can probably find it somewhere, something like that. Right. They can message me through Facebook yes. and um, contact me that way. OK, super. All right. Well, I guess we just are running close on time again. I want to thank you uh, uh, one more time before we close. And, and do you have any final words that you'd like to look at the camera and, and uh, tell our viewers worldwide now uh, just a thought? Oh, well. Your closing thought. <laughs> closing thoughts. Um, I think uh, a friend of mine said it best to me. She said that her creativity inspires her to inspire others. And, she, and I thought, wow. My goodness, that's it. Whatever I do, creative-wise, all I really want to see is somebody else do something like it or say, you know, I really like the way he did this. I'm going to take it a step further. And I think that's really what community, how it all works together, how we all uh, kind of harmonize and get along, that we're going to take this idea and run a little farther with it. Because running by ourselves is eh, exactly. it's a lonely process. That's a, a that's an art community that we find when we rub elbows at an exhibit or at a, the Sedalia Visual Arts Association um, or Mid-Missouri Arts Coalition, what have you, or Kansas City Arts Coalition, um, Jefferson City Art Club, they're there. And we really can gain inspiration by having one of those people see our art and it just give us a new drive for a new project. So, and that sounds a lot like motherly advice that you, <laughs> you've given. Now, well, once again, thanks. And sure, uh, thank. look forward to having you back and talking about the next project or seeing you hopefully at the State Fair. Sure, not this year, uh, next year. Yes. Okay. See you again. Thank okay. you.
I want to thank you, viewers, once again for viewing and, and taking part in JCTV Access, Mid Missouri Art News, and Spotlight on the Arts. And I, I can't uh, ever thank uh, JCTV producer Gloria Enloe and crew, Art Gerhard, uh, for uh, making it all po possible and assisting us in camera work and throughout the, uh, the engineering booth. So I'm Rick J saying see you next time right here on JCTV Access. And don't forget to check out YouTube. See you next time. <laughs>